this day we celebrate the solemnity of the ascension of our Lord into heaven, the second glorious mystery, the article of the creed that Christ is seated body, Christ is seated bodily at the right hand of the Father. What is this mystery of the church, this mystery of the ascension? It is that after 40 days, our Lord was raised up into heaven. His soul and his human body. A human body is in heaven. Our Lord's. Along with the human body and soul of his mother, our blessed mother, who was assumed body and soul into heaven at the end of her life. And heaven will hopefully be filled with our bodies on the last day. This is the article of the creed in which we say we believe in the resurrection of the body. And the ascension of our Lord sheds light upon that second passage from the creed. What do we mean when we say that Christ's body is in heaven? Well, as you recall from the last few weeks as we have read about our Lord's appearances after the resurrection, we know that our Lord's body in many ways was the same after the resurrection as it was before his crucifixion. His disciples recognized him. They ate with him. They talked with him. They could touch him. His body was very much the same, but his body was also different. He could walk through locked doors. He could appear and disappear at will. He could appear to someone and prevent that person from recognizing him. His body was the same, and yet it was different. Because after the resurrection, our Lord had a glorified body. And it was his glorified body that, was, that ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. The opposite of glorified body is clunky body, a body that is encumbered by eyeglasses and hearing aids and crutches and canes and dentures and the like. There will be none of that in heaven. Our Lord assures us, I come to make all things new. And when we make our way to heaven, God willing, it will be in a glorified body, united with our soul, to be with our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit forever and a day. Our Lord's ascension sheds light upon what is in store for us, God willing, if we stay faithful, if we keep following the Good Shepherd, if we keep walking in his ways, and stay close to him, we will be raised up into glory. So that is, what is the ascension? Second point, what did the apostles do in between the ascension and Pentecost? What did they do during those nine days between our Lord's ascension into heaven and the descent of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost? They did exactly as the Lord instructed them to do. They prayed. They went back to the upper room, the place of the Last Supper, the place where our Lord walked through the locked doors on Easter Sunday and again one week later. And they prayed. They prayed, the Acts of the Apostles tells us, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Blessed Virgin Mary prayed with them and for them just as she continues to pray with us and for us. This nine days of prayer was the first novena. And we have an opportunity to join in that novena during these days in between Ascension and Pentecost. I encourage you to pray every day as the early church prayed, come Holy Spirit. 
Come, Holy Spirit, and bless me with your gifts. And I encourage you to focus on the gifts of the Holy Spirit and to name one in particular that you need at this particular time in your life. Ask the Holy Spirit to send you that particular gift. The Holy Spirit gave you that gift on the day of your confirmation, but ask, ask for a booster whether you need the gift of understanding or wisdom, knowledge, courage or fortitude, piety or fear of the Lord, pray intently as did the apostles with the Blessed Mother during that first novena. Come Holy Spirit, give me what I need in order to understand the Lord's will and to put it into practice in my daily living. The third point, why did Jesus have to ascend into heaven? Wouldn't it have been better if he remained with us? In fact, did he not promise to remain with us always, even to the end of the age? Our Lord, it's very ironic, our Lord says this at the conclusion of St. Matthew's Gospel, I will remain with you always, even to the end of the age. And then what happens? He ascends into heaven, he goes up like a rocket, never to be seen again. St. Thomas Aquinas teaches that it is far better for us for the Lord to have ascended into heaven because his ascension gives us the opportunity to grow stronger in the virtues of faith, hope, and charity. Faith, hope, and charity. Our faith increases because the Lord has ascended into heaven. We have faith in other people. We have faith when we hire someone to do a job for us, we have faith that that person will get the job done properly. In some cases, we have faith in that person as long as we can keep an eye on them, and then we know the job's gonna get done right. It takes more faith to trust in what we cannot see than what we can see. Our Lord's ascension gives us the opportunity to develop a strong faith, which is exactly what we need in the midst of these troubling times. So too does our Lord's ascension give us the opportunity to grow in hope, the virtue of hope. What is our great hope? That one day we will be with the Lord in heaven, that one day we will be with him, that where he has gone, we will follow. Our Lord tells us that he is going away for a little while, but he will come back again and take us to himself, that he will raise us up and give us a place to dwell in heaven, a place not made by hands, but eternal in heaven. Our hope is strengthened because we can keep our eyes fixed on heaven. We can long to be with the Lord forever. We can long to abide with him and dwell in him. And here on earth, when we do that very thing, when we stay close to the Lord in word and in sacrament, we are anticipating and hoping for that great day when we will be raised up to share in the life of the saints, God willing. Our faith is increased and our hope is increased by our Lord's ascension. So too is our charity, our love. You see, our Lord does indeed keep his solemn promise. He keeps the promise to remain with us always precisely through the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. It is on this altar where heaven and earth meet. 
for it is from this altar that we are fed with heavenly food, the bread of angels, the medicine of immortality. His body is in heaven and his body is in the tabernacle and will soon be made present upon the altar for us to take into our own bodies so that we might be strengthened for the works of charity, the works of mercy, the corporal works of mercy through which we help others in their physical, practical needs and the spiritual works of mercy through which we help people in matters of the heart, reaching out to the lonely, the disappointed, those who are in mourning, expressing to them and giving to them a share of the love of Christ, the abundant love that we receive in the body of Christ. Because he has ascended into heaven, our charity may increase. And so as we celebrate this solemnity of the ascension of the Lord, may we be grateful that he ascends into heaven. For where he goes, we hope to follow. And may our participation in the great sacrament of the Eucharist today truly bring for each and every one of us an increase in faith, hope, and charity.